so far, this has been a video series about eating. And so it should be. Eating is the key to bulking up. But of course, training had to come in somewhere sooner or later, and unfortunately there's just no avoiding it. So, how do you need to work out if you're planning on bulking? To answer this question, the first thing to consider is how exactly working out will add muscle in the first place. And the answer is that it can work through two separate mechanisms. The first is that lifting weights creates micro tears in your muscle fibre. In other words, the mechanical tension is great enough to cause tiny rips in your muscle that are too small to see or really feel, but which will trigger the body to make repairs. Then, when you rest later on, your system will use amino acids from your diet in order to restore those muscle fibres, while also making them thicker and stronger in the process. The other way it works is by increasing the glycogen stored in the muscle. When you lift weights, this causes a build-up of blood which makes them feel swollen. This is what you may know as the pump. Along with the build-up of blood, though, are a number of metabolites such as testosterone and growth hormone. This triggers more growth in the area too and leads to more glycogen being stored for better muscle endurance going forward. In order to stimulate maximum growth in your muscles, you need to do both these things. But at the same time, you also need to avoid training too intensely for too long. Now, this is a classic mistake. People who want to bulk up think they need to train more and train harder to do it. The problem is that when you train with great intensity for a long duration, you burn through a lot of calories and create a lot of stress resulting in the release of stress hormones like cortisol. This combines to put the body into a more catabolic state again, and that thereby causes the breakdown of muscle, you know, just like being hungry does. So the key is to provide just enough micro tears and just enough metabolites to trigger growth, and then to rest for the remainder of the time. This is what author Tim Ferriss refers to as the MED, or minimum effective dose. And it's great news for you because it means you don't need to spend hours in the gym every day to get into shape. In fact, you mustn't. So the question is, how do you go about lifting in such a way that you're going to create those necessary triggers for growth? And the answer is that you should use isolation movements and drop sets. Not sure what they are? Well, keep watching. An isolation movement is any movement in the gym that involves lifting weights using only one joint. So an example of an isolation movement would be a bicep curl because only the elbow moves. On the other hand, the squat is a multi-joint exercise and so we call it a compound exercise. Isolation movements are currently not in vogue with the hipster stroke paleo crowd, but they remain the very best way to create tears and build up metabolites. That's because they let you focus on just one muscle until it's completely exhausted. Conversely, when you reach failure in the squats, it'll likely be the combination of muscles that can no longer lift the weight, with no one muscle group being completely exhausted. Isolation movements also allow you to lift heavier and for longer without risking injury. That said, compound movements have their benefits too. Because they involve more muscles, for example, they increase the amount of metabolites you produce on the whole. For this reason, it doesn't hurt to start a workout with some squats or bench presses before moving on to your isolation work. So, once you're focusing on just one muscle group with a lat pull down, a bicep curl, a dumbbell row, or a pec fly, then you need to make sure that you're creating both tears and the build-up of metabolites. But there's a problem here. Creating micro-tears means you need to use a very heavy weight for a lower number of repetitions. You give up when you can't do any more reps, and because the weight is so heavy, this will likely have caused some muscle damage in the process. But to build up metabolites, you need to occlude the muscle 
In other words, you need to redirect a lot of blood and nutrients to it where they'll pull and collect. And the best way to do this is with a slightly lighter weight curled for higher repetitions. Try it. The former gives you DOMS, that's delayed onset muscle soreness, the painful muscles you get the next day, while the latter leads to the best pump in the gym. And that's where drop sets come in. This basically means you're going to train by starting out with very heavy weights and just doing a few repetitions. But then, when you reach failure and can't do any more, that's when you're going to drop those weights, move down the rack and pick up the next heaviest. You'll find that by dropping the weight slightly, you're now able to pump out a few more repetitions. And then you drop down again. And again. And by the end, you're barely able to lift the lightest weight in the gym and your arms will feel crippled. But this works like magic. That's because you're constantly challenging yourself and pushing through failure, but also because you're managing to lift the heaviest weights possible while still doing a large volume of work. Remember, there's no pause in between the drops. Drop three or four times, then rest for one minute and then start again. That said, this is just one intensity technique, yet there are others too. And these include things like doing pre-exhaust sets or pyramid sets. Either way, the key is to try and feel the burn and the pump. You know, if you don't get that feeling, then you aren't training hard enough. So that's how you lift the weights. Now the question is which body parts to focus on and when and for how long. As a general rule for bulking, you shouldn't need more than three days of training a week and perhaps four at a push. This way, you'll have plenty of days to rest in between and you'll avoid burning too many calories or getting burned out and suffering with adrenal fatigue. The other good news is that each of those sessions need only last about 40 minutes. And each of these 40-minute sessions can include a few different body parts. If you're using a drop set, for instance, then three sets will be enough and you can then move on to other exercises for the same muscles. You might go from a bicep curl drop set to performing some basic chin-ups. This will further break down the muscle, but after you've completed this for th about three exercises, you can then move on to the next body part. You'll find you can fit two or three body parts into those 40-minute sessions. And the key here is to consider how well different muscle groups complement each other. For example, if you're doing chest exercises, it makes sense to do triceps and or shoulders the same day. Why? Because a lot of exercises actually use these muscles in conjunction, meaning that going from bench press to shoulder press will somewhat pre-exhaust you for the latter. The best way to formalize this is with PPL, or push-pull legs. Here, you simply spend one day of the week doing pushing exercises, you know, bench press, shoulder press, press-ups. One day with all the pulling exercises, so that's pull-ups, shrugs, bicep curls, and one day with the legs. This is a fantastic split for beginners because it allows you to intensely focus on each muscle group, but not entirely for one session. So, 40 minutes of PPL, three times a week, that's your bulking prescription. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.